A man was found dead and another man was hospitalized after an investigation at a home along Greystone Road late Monday night, according to the Greene County Sheriff's Department. An Afton man and woman stopped at the home at 5770 Greystone Road around 9 o'clock Monday night to see if someone was home. When the man knocked on the door, he heard someone inside saying they needed water. The man climbed through the window and found 38-year-old Abraham Joshua Jones dead on the floor of the living room. Jones' father, Charles, who was unable to walk, was found in the next room leaning against a couch and said that he had been in the same spot for eight days. EMS transported Charles Jones for treatment and the Criminal Investigations Department was called to the scene to conduct the investigation into the death. A woman is facing multiple drug charges after she was found passed out behind the wheel of a car early Tuesday morning. The Greene County Sheriff's Department was called to the TA Travel Center on Van Hill Road in Baileyton around 7 o'clock Tuesday morning and found 26-year-old Taylor Jennings of the 1800 block of Jones Bridge Road slumped over the wheel at the gas pump. During a search of a backpack, officers found a package wrapped in plastic and electrical tape which contained 19 grams of methamphetamine, 9 pills, suboxone strips, and 3.8 grams of marijuana. Jennings also had $832 cash and a handgun in her possession at the time, along with two syringes, tweezers, and a butane torch. Jennings was charged with possession of methamphetamine with intent to sell or deliver, possession of a handgun during commission of a felony, possession of a Schedule 3, 4, and 6 drugs, driving on a suspended license, public intoxication, and possession of drug paraphernalia. Her bond was set at $65,300 and a court date is scheduled for this morning. Several arrests were made Tuesday following an investigation into drug activity by the 3rd Judicial District Drug Task Force. Agents with the DTF were in possession of a cell phone from an earlier arrest when they received a text message around noon Tuesday from 30-year-old Bryson Nye of Centel Road, who was asking for prices for methamphetamine. An arrangement was made to meet at the movie theater on the 11E bypass at 3 o'clock Tuesday afternoon, where Nye was arrested. Nye had $500 in his possession, which was to be used to purchase the methamphetamine, along with a half gram of meth and digital scales. He was charged with possession of a Schedule II drug, solicitation to obtain a Schedule II drug, and possession of drug paraphernalia. His bond was set at $52,000. Later in the afternoon, agents had the same phone when they received a Facebook message from 26-year-old Leslie Craven of Morristown, who was reportedly looking to buy methamphetamine for $50. An arrangement was made to sell a gram of meth in the parking lot of the co-op on West Main Street, where agents found Craven and 24-year-old Kelly King, also of Morristown. Craven reportedly had $47 in her shirt pocket and was also in possession of a set of digital scales. Both Craven and King were charged with solicitation to obtain methamphetamine, while Craven was also charged with possession of drug paraphernalia, driving on a revoked license second offense, and violating probation. All three remain at the Greene County Detention Center prior to their initial court appearances this morning. The investigation is continuing into the fire that caused damage at the Summers Taylor plant on the Lonesome Pine Trail late Monday night. According to a report filed with the Greene County Sheriff's Department, two men were feeding cattle across the road from the plant around 8 o'clock Monday night when they saw flames and smoke coming from the asphalt plant area. The men went across the road and saw the flames coming from the belt area of the asphalt bins and began moving equipment from the area while making phone calls to try and contact the fire department and employees. An employee arrived and began to try and contain the fire by using a loader to dump sand on it before fire crews arrived and extinguished the blaze within 30 minutes. According to management, the last of the employees left the plant around 5 o'clock Monday afternoon and there should have been no equipment that was left energized. An exact dollar amount of the damage is pending an estimate but is expected to be more than $100,000. A copy of security camera footage will be provided to the Sheriff's Department as part of the investigation. No injuries were reported. Today is the final day for public comment for the Town of Greenville's comprehensive plan draft. The document was unveiled at a meeting on February 28th and was a culmination of two and a half years of work by focus groups and committees. Among the items of focus in the document are downtown revitalization through increasing retail and dining opportunities and encouraging entertainment and outdoor life after 6 o'clock. Other ideas in the plan cover topics such as land use, housing, transportation, environment, economic development, and citizen participation. The Town of Greenville Comprehensive Plan Draft is available online at greenvilletn.gov. The East Tennessee State University Board of Trustees met Friday afternoon on campus. Scott Neiswanger was elected to serve as chairman of the board. He will be serving a four-year term on the Board of Trustees and is chair and founder of Neiswanger Educational Foundation and executive chair of Land Air Transportation. ETSU is one of six universities formerly governed by the Tennessee Board of Regents that now has its own institutional governing board. That move was established under the FOCUS Act signed by Governor Bill Haslam. 
Pet Armor, a flea and tick brand of Perigo Animal Health, helped to protect Greenville Police Department canines by donating four bullet and stab proof vests. In most cases, law enforcement agencies do not have the budget to purchase canine protective vests because they cost $1,050 each. As a result, police dogs are left unprotected while fighting crime. In partnership with Vested Interest in Canines, a nonprofit organization that provides bullet and staff protective vests to police departments nationwide. Since 2013, Perigo Animal Health has donated more than 75 police dog vests to date. The Greenville Police Department donations benefit four teams, Lieutenant Spradlin and Canine Cajo, Officer Key and Canine Ace, Lieutenant Spano and Rex, and Officer Shell and Grimm. For more on our news, visit our webpage at greenville.com and sign up for our mobile news alerts by texting the word news to 59457. With a look at your world of sports, I'm Jim Miller. High school baseball action on Tuesday in the Blue Ridge Athletic Conference. Greenville beat Granger 6-1, while Cumberland Gap defeated West Green 6-4. In the Watauga Valley Conference, it was North Green over Unique at 10-4. And in softball action, Granger defeated Greenville by a score of 8-5. Georgia Tech and TCU will play Thursday night in New York City for the NIT Championship after semifinal wins on Tuesday. The Yellow Jackets beat Cal State Bakersfield 76-61 in the first semifinal, while the Horned Frogs beat Central Florida 68-53 in the other semifinal matchup. Georgia Tech making their first appearance in the NIT Finals since 1971, while TCU is making its first appearance in the Finals in school history. Lady Vols redshirt junior center Mercedes Russell has been named Honorable Mention All-American by the Associated Press. Russell was the Lady Vols' second leading scorer at 16.1 points per game this season, ranking ninth in the conference. She also ranked fourth in the conference in rebounds with 9.7 per game. Russell led the team in scoring 10 times, rebounding 20 times, and block shots 17 times this season. Her 56.2% field goal percentage was fifth in the conference, and she ranked fifth in the league with 1.4 blocks per game. Russell also ranks seventh nationally, with the conference leading 19 double-doubles this season. Over the weekend, Russell announced via social media that she will be returning next year for her final season with the Lady Vols. Greenville's Allen Johnson will be competing this weekend in the 18th annual Denso Spark Plugs NHRA Nationals at Las Vegas Motor Speedway. In addition to the NHRA Nationals, Johnson will be competing in the prestigious k n Filters Horsepower Challenge. It's the 14th year that Johnson will be competing in the bonus race, and he is one of nine drivers that has won both the challenge and the main event in the same weekend. Qualifying at the NHRA Nationals in Las Vegas begins Friday with two qualifying runs, two more qualifying runs on Saturday, and the eliminations on Sunday. With a look at your world of sports, I'm Jim Miller.